on any given afternoon, Broward County deputies come across this. And he told me he paid five bucks for that little bag. And the high that they get will last several hours. This is Flocka, just one of the inexpensive synthetic drugs ravaging South Florida. And there's a new twist that's making fighting these drugs even harder. E-cigarettes or vaporizer pens. It's just a huge challenge. It's affecting our entire communities from, from prevention to rehabilitation. Lieutenant Ozzie Tianga says vaping drugs is so discreet, teens can do it right in school. There's no scent. They sit in the back of the room and they think it's funny and they're vaping. And what they're vaping, I cannot determine. It used to be that if you were trying to get high, you would, it would smell. Exactly. All of it has changed. And that same secrecy makes it tough for police to know what's inside that vape pen. They have to get it tested by a lab. And you can't determine what's in it right away. Not at all. In fact, these individuals can um, smoke it right in front of you. A recent CDC study found that e-cigarette use more than tripled among middle school and high school students in 2014. It's not known how much of that is drug related, but young vape users are posting videos of themselves getting high on YouTube. Hey, 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 my hair on fire. Bro, bro, you see him, man. That ain't nothing but a vape. My hair on fire. The Drug Enforcement Administration is so concerned because synthetics can be so dangerous, no matter how they're ingested. We've seen that time and time again where somebody has uh, overdosed and died. Uh, there are a significant number of overdoses that are occurring related to these types of drugs. All of this is so new, no one's keeping track. No one knows just how many people have been injured or have died from vaping synthetic drugs. But already, emergency rooms are seeing an increase, and the stories are disturbing. I have had patients um, in my practice in the emergency room that I have walked in on that are actually vaping at the bedside. Dr. John Cunha says recently a patient was discharged after an overdose and went into a hospital bathroom on his way out of the hospital, vaped more drugs, and had to be taken back to the ER. I think that these devices do have a role in helping people get off of actual cigarettes um, and that they may be proven safer in that case. Um, but in the hands of teenagers and drug abusers, they are definitely a very dangerous thing to have. The thing to remember here, Jake, is that these are not classified as drug paraphernalia, so there's no federal age limit on who can buy them, although many states do have restrictions. But these shops are popping up everywhere, and not to mention they can easily be bought on the Internet. Now, the industry says that vaping is a great thing for a lot of people, that it's helping people to quit smoking, not helping people to start smoking. They, of course, say everything is subject to abuse by drug addicts. And, of course, there is a study now that shows that many of these teens who are vaping, Jake, they have never smoked before. This is new to them.